I have so many more purses than I thought I did. Oh, these bangs are a mess, guys. I'm trying to grow them out. Not sure how much longer I'm gonna last. I might end up just chopping them. I just wanted to try something different. <laughs> so bear with me. Hey everybody, CR Media Gal here, also known as Andrea. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would share with you my bag collection because one, I have gotten a couple new purses over the past year. I actually made mention of this for you oldie but goodies you might even remember in my spring try on haul from last year that I was lacking a certain styles of purses in my wardrobe. I'm very much covered with all other accessories but purses were something that I just haven't been good about switching them out or really taking advantage of the purses that I have. I have a pretty substantial collection at this point, so I thought I would take you through my collection. I love these kind of videos, so I hope you'll enjoy seeing my little collection. And it's not little, it's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was. And of course, I've only realized that now that I am surrounded by bags. Yikes. We might even be doing a bit of a declutter as well. We'll see. If you are new here, I do a lot of fashion related content on my channel. So I would love for you to subscribe below. If you enjoy collection videos like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. This is going to be a longer video than I anticipated. So let's jump right in. This is not going to be in really any particular order, except I'll probably save the designer purses that I have towards the end. I'm going to start with what has been over the course of the past, I'd say a little over a year, my everyday bag. I primarily use this between going back and forth at both of my jobs, even for like running errands. It's this massive tote bag that I got from TJ Maxx. I think I only paid like $25 for it. It's just a magnetic closure. So it's easy to chuck things in here, including like my lunch and snacks and whatnot. What I really loved was the bit of color blocking. It's brown on the inside and black on the outside. It has gold hardware. Like any of my other work bags in the past, I use this pretty hard. The point that um, one of these zippers actually doesn't, I think it's this one, doesn't even <laughs> zip up and down anymore. Not a big deal. It still has plenty of life left in it. But this is what the inside looks like. I just have a bunch of crap in here at the moment. This brand is Mystique. Mystique? Am I saying that right? Probably not. Brand I've never heard of. But again, it was really cheap and I was desperately searching for a new work purse because my other one went to crap. Yeah, I've been using this over the past year and it's worked out very, very well. And you know, as far as inexpensive bags go, I think this is a nice one. It's really pretty. This is my everyday work purse. Why am I doing that? This is my everyday work purse. Then a couple smaller bags that I have actually had for years. That's with you, some of them I forgot that I had. Probably the tiniest bag in my entire collection. It's this little pouch wristlet type of black bag. It's got three different zippers. I think I might have also bought this at like Marshalls or TJ Maxx because I wanted a really small clutch to just put money and credit cards and my ID card in. The last couple of years, I really have not reached for this very much. I'd say since like post pandemic, I really haven't used this much at all. This is Latico. It's just got some like pretty designs on the inside. Very, very basic. The wristlet is detachable. I actually think this is one I'm gonna put on my Poshmark because it's still in great condition. And again, I have not been using this. So if you're ever interested, by the way, in checking out my Poshmark closet, I've been very neglectful in updating it, but I'm, I'm trying to do better lately. The link is always in my description box. I have no need for this anymore. So this one's gonna go. Then this is another like really pretty cute black wristlet from Steve Madden. It was actually gifted to me probably a solid five years ago now, maybe even longer, but it looks brand new because I barely used it. Believe it or not, after you see this entire collection, you're gonna be like, what? But I actually still do want a smaller black crossbody. However, ones that I do have, they're just like a smidgen too small. Like none of them fit my wallet, which is ideally what I want, which is also why I really haven't reached for this one much, but I, I keep hanging on to it because I don't know, I love the design. It's got a back slip pocket, gold hardware, which I always prefer. And it also has this like 
phone charger thing that I, to be honest with you, have never used. <laughs> so I think I'm finally going to part with this one, but I've loved it. It's really, really nice. Unfortunately, too small for what I'm needing these days. And this is probably one of the oldest purses in my collection, and it's a dupe. My one sister's former boyfriend from like at least 20 years ago, if not longer. Couldn't even tell you the year anymore because it's been that long. I forget where he was and he just scarfed up a couple of these for both of my sisters and myself. It's this cute little, I guess, shoulder bag that of course has the Louis Vuitton logo on it, but very much a dupe. <laughs> even though this bag is over 20 years old, I still use it on occasion. You wouldn't know it's that old. I think they've thought of like every detail, like even, you know, there's the Louis Vuitton logo stamped on the side there. The only problem is the zipper is like, can be a little bit tough to open and close, but big deal. It is big enough to at least hold my phone, but as far as like my wallet, I think this is still a smidge too small. Yeah, whenever I'm in need of like a brown purse to go with a number of things in my wardrobe, I usually reach for this one. It's tough to close. There we go. But yeah, as far as dupes go, I mean, it's not bad. It definitely, at least from afar, I think you would be questioning like, oh, is that a real Louis Vuitton? Or I don't know, maybe that's just me. This one will definitely stay in my collection. This one, I actually took it to Disney with me the last time I went. My sister and brother-in-law actually got this for me as a gift when they were at Disney. We're down there looking at houses and um, I watched my niece and nephews for a long weekend. So she surprised me with this, which she totally didn't have to do but <laughs> it's baby Yoda. How freaking adorable is that? Clutch or pouch bag for the few times that I ever get to go to Disney. It actually holds a decent amount. It's got this front pocket here, but then it has an opening on the back and you can kind of just hold it like that, which makes it pretty easy. It has a detachable wristlet as well. <laughs> His one ear is a little wonky now, but that's okay. This is a lounge fly bag, by the way. I have a couple lounge fly bags in my collection. And yet this one is actually held up really well considering I used it in Disney all day and it didn't get scuffed up. Saying something, because I do not use my bags very carefully. I'm trying to do so going forward since now I have a couple more, more luxurious bags in my collection. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to treat them better. <laughs> so this is my little baby Yoda and I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> this isn't going anywhere. And then I have two lounge fly fandom bags, which I'm not gonna lie, I actually have not been using. Since this is turning into a bit of a declutter video as well, I might be getting rid of at least one of them. The first is this really pretty black Harry Potter satchel bag. It's got this beautiful printed gold colored image of Hogwarts and an owl there. It's got the crossbody strap, but also the top handles. Got the lounge fly tag in the back. I actually initially started using this as my work purse after my last one went kaput, but I realized fairly quickly that it was starting to fray in certain areas. And some of the reviews that I'd even read before I bought this said that the print wipes off. I tried to be careful with it, but as soon as I started seeing the the threads on the handles starting to go, I thought, okay, I've got to like stop using it for work, which is how I ended up with that TJ Maxx purse, which has actually lasted me very, very well. Much better than my Loungefly bag, which is interesting. Because anybody familiar with Loungefly, you know that these fandom bags, they are not cheap. I do love this bag, but I think I'm, I'm ready to retire this. I don't really wear a whole lot of fandom stuff out and about anymore. And nothing against that. I have another like designer black purse upcoming here that I'm gonna show you that I will opt for anytime if it comes down to these two. I know I'm gonna reach for that one and not this one. In any case, you know, it, it got a decent amount of wear out of it. Yeah, this is the um, second lounge fly bag that I have. And then this lounge fly bag fell in love with it as soon as I saw it on Hot Topics website where I used to buy a lot of my fandom merch. I guess I just got too scared to use it because of what I saw happening fairly quickly with my Harry Potter bag. So sadly, this has not been getting much use, but I feel like I've just rediscovered it <laughs> because I've been keeping it in storage. I think I'm gonna try to use it a lot more. I mean, you live once. It's this beautiful forest green Peter Pan satchel. The gold 
imaging on here is actually embossed. I hope that's coming up on camera, but it's got Tinkerbell here, a bunch of actually etched stars, and then Big Ben there. This is what the inside looks like. I'm not even like a big Disney or Peter Pan fan at all. I don't know. I was just, as soon as this popped up on Hot Topic, I was like, I want this bag. Mainly because I loved the colors. It's so beautiful and like brand new because I think I might have taken this out and about once. I've just been so scared to use this bag. I, I definitely gotta take this out and about more often. So yeah, this is my adorable Peter Pan satchel from Loungefly. Oh. Scratch that. I have another Harry Potter lounge fly bag to show you. I actually initially bought this probably, gosh, three or f no, four years ago after I'd gone to Disney um, with a friend and I ended up using one of her lounge fly backpacks because it was just like the perfect size to keep everything in without looking around a really massive purse all day long. So I immediately went out after that trip and bought myself a backpack with the intention of using that the next time I went to Universal. Now I've since been back to Disney and I haven't been back to Universal since. I, I'm hoping one of these days they'll get back there. As a result, I really haven't used it which is a shame because it's a beautiful bag. Like I love this bag. It's this gorgeous white quilted, very simple design, which I love. And as far as like lounge fly backpacks, this is a mini. It has a gold metal 3D owl on the front and it just has Hogwarts embroidered on there. It's got the lounge fly tag, of course. It even has the Hogwarts crest there on the uh, zipper. Inside is this deep, beautiful maroon color. I'm a Slytherin, so I wish it was green, but obviously I could overlook it because I bought it anyway. I've been so reluctant to get rid of this backpack because I just, I love it so much. And I keep thinking, well, the next time I go to Universal and go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, I'm gonna wish I had this. But I'm, I just think realistically, obviously I don't get to Florida very often. I've had this bag for like four years and I haven't used it. That's ridiculous. Do not be like me. Don't buy this kind of stuff and then like just let it sit in the closet. But if you are like that, by all means, comment down below because I'd like to know that I'm not the only one that literally just hoards stuff because it's pretty <laughs> and I just can't bear to part with it. This is a tough one, but honestly, I, I need to get rid of this. And I, I have no reason these days to opt for a backpack over like any of the satchels or crossbodies that I have. This is brand new. It's just missing the tags on it and it wasn't cheap, but you gotta go. You're beautiful, but you're just hiding in storage at this point. Ugh, that's so crushing. I love this bag. It's so pretty. I think I'm going to finish up with a few cheaper bags that I have in my collection. The next two bags I actually showed in that spring try-on haul from last year. These are both probably the most inexpensive bags that I own. They are from Shein. The first of which is this cute little black quilted crossbody bag. It has a snap button closure, completely open on the inside. It's got a nice long gold chain here. Thought that this was gonna be that little black crossbody that I've been after. But even so, unfortunately, it's still a little too small for me. It's a shame because I really do love this like quilted design. Shein can be hit or miss, as we all know. It's held up very well. I think I'm actually going to probably part with this one, but it's cute. The second bag is this one from Shein that is a very obvious dupe of the infamous Prada purse with the metal lion's head. It's really, well constructed and really well made, again, considering it's Shein. Got these stud detailings. That line head is really well put on. Snap button closure. And what I like about this one is it's even the inside's a little bit more well made because it does have a zip closure. And I even love this fun like crossbody strap. However, unfortunately though, I have not reached for this one nearly as much as I thought I would. And I think a lot of that is because it's again, too small. I, I like bigger bags. So I think I might give this over the next year to see how much I reach for it. And if I don't, I might end up putting this on my Poshmark. You know, it's, it's like with anything else in my closet these days. If I'm not wearing it or I'm not utilizing it as much as I thought I would, there's, there's no point in keeping it. I'd rather somebody else be able to use these items and get the wear and tear out of them as they deem fit. But this is a really cute bag. I, I 
really do like it. So I have to remember to reach for this more. The last bag from Shein that I have is another dupe. And this is a dupe for the unique vintage pumpkin jack-o'-lantern bag that I think has been reduced to like 30 bucks at the moment. But at the time, and I've actually been eyeing up that bag for probably a solid two and a half years now, it's full price. But secondly, I saw this one and I liked it for very different reasons that I can't use that other more expensive jack-o'-lantern purse for. So I went with the Shein version and I love this one because the one side got the smiley, somewhat angry, I don't know, <laughs> jack-o'-lantern face, which is adorable. But I also use this in the fall time with this side facing front because it resembles a pumpkin. So I actually prefer that over the official version because the official version has two different jack o lantern faces. I like with this one, one side is faceless basically, but you still know what it is. I've actually used this quite a bit. This actually fits my wallet, it fits my phone, it fits all of my essentials. It does actually have more room in there than you would think. Also, it's another detachable crossbody strap and it's adjustable. I don't really shop there anymore, but it's nice to see that even over the past couple of years, they've, they've upped their game quite a bit. Considering I probably had this for two years now, it has held up extremely well. I mean, barely any dings in it. It's not like starting to get misshapen, which has happened with a number of Shein bags that I've had in the past. As far as like Shein purses go, if you're looking for something more eccentric and more for the spooky season, this is a great option. You can use it just for the fall time too, if you prefer. I think this one has come back. I've seen it in other versions or like other faces. I think this was only $13 and in my opinion, well worth the money. Next is another smaller crossbody bag that I actually bought a couple ago from the consignment shop. That's my second job. It's this really pretty red tartan crossbody. If you've been here for a moment, you'll already know that I love anything tartan and plaid. I'm like obsessed. I was actually meant to put this online for them. Decided in the end, yeah, I had to have this. This was brand new with tags. It was still like in the original packaging and everything. The inside has like a slip pocket and then a zip pocket. It's a lot more roomy than you would expect. Definitely fits my phone and my essentials. Certainly more of like a holiday bag, but I think it was only $20 to begin with and I have a discount at this consignment shop. So um, I got this for next to nothing. This is from Talbot. Every so often I find some cute stuff from them and I thought this was too adorable to pass up. Okay, I think from here on, these are all mainly like designer bags, although, the next two I'm gonna show you were collaboration bags. I guess they're like half designer, half not, I, I don't know. But if you've been around here for a bit, you'll recognize them because I showed both of these at, in my pastel and color block video from back in the summer of 2022, I guess, or somewhere around that time. They're from the Stony Clover Lane and Target collaboration. The first is this beautiful baby blue duffel bag, which I'm happy to say has gotten a lot of use over the past year. Anytime I've done like overnight dog sitting or babysitting for anyone in my family, I always take this bag with me. It holds everything I need it for, for like a short like weekend trip. It's really, really nice quality, really durable too and easy to clean, which I love. It's got gold hardware. I needed a duffel bag for like shorter trips. All I have otherwise is my like suitcase, which I feel is like too bulky and too big. So it's nice to have something versatile like this in my closet. The other one, which I, at the time I got it, I was obsessed with it. And to be fair, I'm still obsessed with it, but I really haven't used it. It's this really durable, beautiful color block tote from the Stony Clover and Target collaboration. But as you can see, I haven't used it much because the tags are still on it. So it's a shame. This is so beautiful and I love it. It's like 
the perfect like a beach tote bag. It's not gotten its use and it's so pretty. I, I love it. I love the colors. It feels like excellent quality. Like even the gold hardware on it has little details like cute little hearts. I mean, it's just so sweet. I even bought the matching clutch or wristlet. This I might just put in my bathroom because I could totally use this to put makeup and skincare stuff for when I travel. I think I'm going to give it this summer and see if I use it at all. If I don't, I might just put this on my Poshmark because it's a huge bag and it takes up a decent amount of room in my closet. And all y'all oldie but goodies, you know, um, my closet is filled to the max. Any place I can make room, I need to. We'll see how things go this spring and summer. And if not, I just, I don't know, I have a sinking feeling I might have to put this on my Poshmark because like, again, there's no reason to keep something in your closet if you're not using it. I've spent years being too afraid to use certain items and like, it's just silly, in my opinion. This is so cute, I love it. I told you I had a substantial amount of bags. We're probably only halfway through this, so. Bear with me. We're moving into like the official like designer brands or more luxurious brands. The next is, um, aside from that Louis Vuitton dupe, probably like the second oldest bag in my collection. Like this purse is over 20 years old, by the way. And it's this cute little crossbody coach bag and these really pretty like darker, richer colors. Looks pretty, pretty good for being 20 years old. Like I've, I have taken very good care of it. I used to use this quite a bit back in the day. I'm trying to remember, I think I got this as a gift, but in any case, I'm just haven't reached for it as much post pandemic. And I think that's because I have especially found over the past year that I've been working at this consignment shop and doing so much inventory and discovering different brands that I like and don't like. I'm not a coach person. You know, everybody has different tastes. Everybody likes different things. It's just not for me. This bag has served me very well. It's got a back huge pocket to put stuff in. And then the inside is nice and deep, deeper than you would think. It's in really great shape. I have enough bags in my collection that I can afford to get rid of some. And uh, I think I'm gonna part with this one. I'd rather see it go to somebody else who's gonna put it to more use. I love those colors, especially that deep purple. That's really, really pretty. Next, I have two items from the brand La Femme Noir. I've mentioned them a number of times over the last like two years, but I'm sure I'm butchering the name. First, you might recognize if you follow me over on Instagram. If you don't, I share a lot of fashion inspo and outfits over there, so be sure to go and give me a follow. First is this beautiful, sleepy, hollow, circular purse. This is amazing. Keep reiterating it on this channel, especially when it's related to any sort of fall and Halloween themed videos. I have a number of those that you can watch because I'm very much into the fall, Halloween, Christmas, and winter time. I, I focus primarily on those seasons here. I love Sleepy Hollow. It's my absolute favorite spooky movie book. I have a fascination with the Headless Horseman. I bought this last year on sale, but like on sale was $80 instead of a hundred. But these are one of a kind, unique bags and totally worth it in my opinion. Quality is exceptional. I wanna make sure I show you guys the inside cause it's got the Sleepy Hollow print. It even has Sleepy Hollow etched in the back there. I believe this has been available from them for the past two years. I'm assuming they'll come back with it again next year. It did come in either this black and white version or you could get the black and red. I went with the black and white because the black and white is more versatile for me personally. I only get really one month's worth out of it, but to me it's more than worth the investment. Exceptional. And then to go with that, and I actually showed this in a past haul, but I'm gonna show it again briefly here. I got the matching, I guess it's a wristlet from the Tim Burton Sleepy Hollow movie. It's got the infamous red cardinal on the one side and then the empty bird cage on the other. It does come with a wristlet. I just don't have it attached at the moment, but it does have the same inside Sleepy Hollow print as the large Headless Horseman purse does. I actually bought this off of Poshmark, new with tags, and I got it for cheaper than I would have through the website. So I saved a little bit of money. Haven't taken it out and about yet, obviously, but I definitely intend to. I know I said that like I'm really 
don't get much use out of smaller purses, but this is definitely a smaller specialty purse that I will totally keep and use because it's just too precious. And again, like the Headless Horseman purse, it's really very unique. And that's the other type of bag that I like to have in my wardrobe these days is stuff that is more unique and not massively produced that you can find anywhere. And this is one of them. Lastly, for the spooky items that I have to show you is this gorgeous, huge black cauldron tote that I got from The Beheaded this past year. I've shown it in previous hauls, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. But as you can see, it's like massive. It's like one third the size of me, it's huge. And it's got a ton of room. It's got two huge side pockets and then a central pocket. This does come in a smaller version. And I think at the time that I bought this, I don't think the smaller one was available. And I wanted to purchase this while it was on sale. So I went with this one. However, in hindsight, I almost wish I would have gotten the smaller version because I feel like I would probably get more use out of that than this one. This one is not going anywhere. I use it primarily around October. It's still like quirky and versatile enough that like this doesn't have to be a Halloween purse. You can totally use this any time of year, really. I just, that's how my brain operates. Be trying to pull this out more going forward because I only used it a couple times last year because I don't want it to get damaged, number one, but also these little feet on the bottom, which is like, my favorite part they're so stinking cute like look at them they um are very like flimsy and i'm really nervous about them they don't keep this like standing up straight i actually wish they did i don't want them to get damaged at all so i've just been trying to be super careful with this purse it's so cool isn't it i love it the last couple bags that i have to show you are all kate spade i have discovered that my designer of choice when it comes to bags is Kate Spade, especially her more unique, eclectic stuff. I I live for them. I know it's not very practical, I get it, which is why I technically have three out of six more like quirky purses to show you. That's just how I roll. The first Kate Spade bag that I ever bought, and I actually had a gift card to use towards this because I wanted it so, so badly. This box Kate Spade purse. I love this so much. If y'all have been here for a hot minute, you know how I feel about foxes. They are my spirit animal. I adore them. I don't use it enough because to be fair, in the past, I've been too afraid. And even then, the few times I have taken it out, it already has some scuffing on here. I'm going to try and get that out with some magic eraser or something. This, oh, that totally crushes me. You can't see it unless you get up close, but still. It's a snap closure. It's got the Kate Spade Jacquard two-way um, lining on the inside. The inside is nice and deep. There's one slip pocket. This was the first designer bag investment that I ever made, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. When I saw this in person at the Kate Spade store that I was shopping at with my best friend, like I, I gasped out loud. It was like, $260 at the time. It was finally reduced, I think, down to like close to 200 and I was able to at least use a gift card to put towards it. I've had this for probably a solid seven or eight years now. Few times that I have ever taken this out and about, somebody always says something, which I mean, that's the point with any of the Kate Spade more unpractical purses, like the, their statements. I feel like this bag was made for me. I think of all of my Kate Spade bags and I love them all dearly. This will always be my favorite. Mainly because it was the first like designer investment that I personally made. He's so cute. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go in order of when I bought all of these Kate Spades because the next five I've only bought over the past probably nine months. I've got a little cray cray with the Kate Spade purses, but I'm in love. They like, this is, this is the brand that just speaks to me. So the next bag that I bought is this really pretty brown satchel bag. It's absolutely beautiful. I actually got this for a steal. I got this on Poshmark for $40. 
For any of you who follow Kate Spade or are familiar with any of these bags, this is like regularly over $300. Besides my little Louis Vuitton brown bag, I didn't have any brown bags in my collection. And that's something that I've been wanting for, gosh, several years. Love this chocolate brown color. It does have a couple little like scuffs on it so it's not perfect if you thrift or you buy second hand that's the gamble you take and i'm i'm totally okay with that that does not bother me it does have a crossbody strap i just usually prefer to use the top handle with this one it's got three sections tons of room in it easily fit everything that i need with the gold hardware i've been using this a ton yeah, this rich chocolate brown is just oh it's everything. Anytime I wear this anywhere, somebody asks me. I tell them the story. $40 on Poshmark. And they like, their jaws drop. They can't believe it. Absolute steal on this one. Next up was another like investment purse for me. I bought this one like the Fox, brand new. If you were on social media at all during the holidays, this was popping up everywhere. And I was literally dying inside over it because it was originally like almost $500. And I thought, nah, can't pay that. Well, then it was reduced to, I think like 260 somewhere in there. And I decided that I could not live without it. You watched my holiday outfit inspiration video. You saw this paired with virtually every outfit. The infamous gingerbread bag. Oh my God. Isn't this like the most freaking adorable bag you've ever seen? If it isn't, you're lying. The attention to detail on this blows my mind. The scalloped roof top, like that's unbelievable to me. Even the way it opens up top here with the chimney does have a crossbody strap. I like to just use it top handle myself. It opens up like kind of like a doctor's bag and there's a decent amount of room in there. Love the lining on it too, it's gorgeous. It actually like kind of shimmers. This bag is unbelievable. So I ended up with two holiday related bags, which was not my intention. To be fair, I got that Talbot bag after I bought this, but I, I've used this a lot over the winter at least. So this has gotten a decent amount of use. I'm not knocking anybody who feels a certain way about this. It's funny, cause I never used to be one, much of a purse person. I would just use like the same few bags over and over again until they disintegrated basically. And then I had to buy new ones. But I've definitely come to really appreciate designer bags in a way that I never did when I was younger. I think it just comes down to finding a designer that you love. Kate Spade has totally been that for me. <laughs> this is me. Oh, it's so, so precious. Next up is another crossbody from Kate Spade. Only this one I'd actually had on my wish list and my sister saw it and she had me for Christmas. So we both went to our local Kate Spade outlet together and we ended up buying each other Kate Spade purses for Christmas. She bought me this wonderful color block crossbody Kate Spade. I loved like the beige coloring, cream and the black because I have so much of this in my wardrobe. And as it turns out, as far as crossbodies go, I've been reaching for this one the most because it just fits my wallet and my phone. So it's got plenty of space in there. It has a slip pocket on the side. It's a flap with a snap button closure. Old hardware, of course. These type of bags tend to come in different styles in the same colors. This color blocking I know came in a satchel as well. I'm pretty sure this one might still be available. And if I can still link to any of these below, by the way, I will. But yeah, if you're looking for like a decent size spotty bag from Kate Spade, I love these. This one came in a host of different colors. I'm very grateful to my sister for getting me this. Not that I needed any more Kate Spade after that, but I bought two more. Aside from a decent sized black crossbody, I don't need any more bags, clearly. This next bag from Kate Spade is extra, extra special. I have been after this bag for probably two years now. It's a very rare to come up for sale because it's an older Kate Spade purse. And I kept seeing it available from different sellers. I'm still kicking myself because at one point I found it available on Poshmark for like 125 and I should have bought it. Every other seller has been like triple that amount. It's usually like $300 400. I've even seen it for 475. The pricing on it is insane from resellers. I recently found it available from a Poshmark seller for initially, I think it was 275. 
I offered like $225. <laughs> Thankfully, the seller accepted my offer, even though, again, it's an investment piece and I was willing to pay out for it. The cheap bitch in me will always be annoyed by that. <laughs> that I basically paid $100 more. It's this beautiful fall. Yes, hello, me, the fall girl satchel bag. It's got all this beautiful beading and stitching, all these gorgeous fall leaves. Even though it is like fall themed, I love that the colors aren't necessarily fall color. With this deep burgundy, there's some brown, there's some light pink in there. This goes with so much of my wardrobe anyway. I can easily use this all year round. This is such a stunning purse. I love it. I've actually already taken it out a couple times because it's just, it's too pretty. I gotta show it off. I can't believe I actually own this now after wanting it for like two freaking years. My fall heart is like complete now that I own this bag. So I love that I can show off my appreciation for fall all year round. This is what I wanna spend my hard earned money on and very well worth it. We are at the end. Lastly is another Kate Spade purse. I actually bought this initially for my best friend. She loved my brown satchel so much that I told her, because her birthday was coming up, hey, I'll go on the hunt and try and find something like this for you. I might not be able to get this color. And she didn't care. She just liked the whole style of it. I ended up finding a really pretty taupe one for her. I was a little bit worried because I really wasn't sure if she would like the color of it. And then this one, popped up at the consignment shop I work at. And I thought, oh, number one, I love that. But number two, my boss gave me the idea. She's like, well, give her the option. Maybe she'll like it. The only thing with this one I was concerned about that I wasn't sure if my friend would like was the patent leather. And in the end, she ended up going with the initial one that I got off of Poshmark. So um, I knew in the back of my head that if my friend didn't want this one, I was gonna keep it. Because I have actually been on the hunt for a larger black satchel purse. And I finally found it for only $30. This is a vintage Kate Spade. It's been in their collection for I think at least a decade, especially for like a really vintage design that you can't find from Kate Spade anymore. This to me is another steal. What I mainly loved was the patent leather. I don't have a patent leather bag, but also I love the um, two-toned color blocking. I love that it's mainly black, but the handles are brown and full on leather. It's got the Kate Spade emblem there with a huge front pocket and the lining is polka dots too, which I thought was super, super cute. And of course the hardware is gold, which is perfect. It's huge. I'm not gonna open it up completely because I have a bunch of crap in here. I was just using this purse. It does have some scuffing on it. I've been meaning to go over it with maybe some like magic eraser and see how that works. Now, what I also had in mind with this one is eventually whenever my work purse <laughs> from TJ Maxx goes kaput, I wanna use this. Now granted, I'm gonna be super careful with it. Who knows, I might get too scared and in the end opt for like a cheaper purse to use for work, but considering how old it is, it still has so much life left in it. I already use it a ton. It's just so different to me. Like, I love that. It's so fun. All right. And that was my massive bag collection. Like I said, I have so many more bags than I thought. But you know what? I'm so glad I did this because now seeing all my bags out in front of me, I know what purses I just am not utilizing anymore and that need to go to other homes. Also, what ones I do want to hang on to and start using more. How many am I actually going to get rid of here? Six, potentially seven. The fact that I'm willing to part with six, that's so much more than I thought. That's not bad. This was a good exercise for me. I need to start doing this with more stuff in my closet. Comment down below and let me know which of these was your favorite. I'd be curious to know which ones that you guys love and if there's any particular designer brands that you collect or that maybe you don't collect but you admire from afar and really would love to start investing in. If you'd be curious to see more of this type of content on my channel, be sure to let me know down below as well. Please be sure to give it a thumbs up before you go. I really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because if you guys like this kind of stuff, I'll do more of it. Hope you are all doing well wherever you are. And I will see you guys again soon. Bye. Oh my gosh, I can't reach stuff. Okay. I feel like they made this and thought, you know, somebody out there, somebody out there is going to want this. By the way, you like my nails? I finally got acrylic nails. Oh, one, two, three, four. Me, of course. Me. I haven't had them for over three years and I've missed them. Ooh. Oh. Just got some makeup on there. Jeez. Gosh, I need to be careful. This is turning into an addiction and I gotta be careful. <laughs>